outside driving out, acting crazy. Now, where I called up FBI hotline, because David said his girlfriend's family owned the place. I wouldn't be able to withstand and realizing all the threats on my life and then all the times on my life with him and his church people from before, before we moved up there. And thinking, no, he's got a connection and that girl had cost me um, my job. So I didn't know who to call, so I Googled uh, the FBI and then it came up the hotline and I called the 1-800 number. Okay, we'll sign an agent to call you back. Okay, Will had called this, my number and left a voicemail. And they left, uh, Will left his number. Well, I didn't call him back for three days. You can't tell me with me reporting threats on my life and in three days I haven't returned him a phone call that the FBI wasn't freaking out. And driving up there and finding out what the hell is going on. She's reporting threats with witnesses. Or, or, or not witnesses, but um, uh, threats on her life. And from different sources. Okay? Because I told a hotline of different sources. I got these people threatening my life in the mall. I got it here. I got it there. I told the hotline. Okay? And I was crying on the hotline. We'll get an agent to call you back. Okay. I told the hotline. So, all right. Will called and let, called within a day or two. Left a message. They had me so drugged up I couldn't get out, out of bed. Okay. I I remember picking up my phone out of bed and listening to it, laying it back down and crying. You can't tell me they weren't up there driving around trying to find out what the hell's going on. She is and calling us back. She's got all these threats and they're leaving them in the mall. They're da 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 Find out why this woman's not calling us back. They weren't up there driving out around finding out what the hell's going on. Okay? That they didn't know they had my house booked. Mm-hmm. That they didn't know that Dave was dating retired George Pete's daughter. That they didn't know that they were stalking me in my home illegally. That the neighbors next door on the other side of the duplex had a copy of my phone. That that man follow, went up there and told Hamer that he was FBI and impersonated him. And it was a stunt for Dave to come front me in the truck like the camp investigator said. April 14, 22 in Sablon. That's sick what's going on. They had a man at, pretend he was FBI before she called that agent back. It was a stunt for Dave to confront her in the truck. That people pretend to be your kids, bad-mouthing her. Their kids didn't know anything about it. And it's been the people hurting her the whole time. You can't tell me, with me calling the hotline, reporting that I got all these different people threatening me in the mall, Dave, and then that phone call, and da-da-da, we'll get an agent to call you back. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they got me so drugged up, I can't get out of bed. And Will called and left his phone number. I remember reaching over in bed and listening to a, um, a voicemail and laying down and laying in, and crying and just to being so drugged up I couldn't get out of bed. And that you can't believe they weren't freaking out that for three days I couldn't call him back. And there's threats on my life in different places. And people knowing of it. That they didn't go up there and drive around and find out what's going on. Hmm? Hmm? I don't believe it. I don't believe that they didn't. Because then they would have known that they were illegally bugging my house for Michelle, a retired judge, his daughter, that the men on the other side of the duplex had a copy of my phone. And it may have been just one of them impersonating a federal officer that went up to pay Murray. Uh-huh, before I call Will back. So for that cheap stunt, for Dave to confront me in the truck. Mm-hmm. And that they were drugging me up and framing me. Because December 9th, 21, not only did they tell Edith Oakland apartment at 4 p.m. on Cleveland Avenue 
that all the tapes before were them and not me. That's just a bunch of men doing crimes down here. Stark County Hunger Task Force on Ninth Street. There was a distributing food in the back. There's only four or five volunteers and there's cameras in there. There was a white man bald with dark eyes. Keep list of volunteers. Actually worked the case. He came out. And he said, we've always knew the tapes before were them and not her. So we never said a word. They knew they were drugged and photoshopped. Hmm? So you can't tell me where I called the hotline and I told them they're leaving threats in the wall. Mm-hmm. Told them about the what a shame guy. Okay. Told them. I think I even told them about being followed around it. Mm-hmm. I told them about Dave holding me down. I told the hotline a lot. And I was crying. We'll get an agent to call you back. I told them about the threats in the mall. Okay. And I remember being drugged up so bad, and I was crying so bad, I was in bed, I couldn't get up. And I reached over where there was a phone call. I listened to the voicemail. This is Agent Will, da da da, I need you to call me back. And I remember like, crawling back over and going back to sleep. And you can't tell me in three days time that those kind of threats that they weren't up there driving around thinking, what the hell happened to this woman? Hmm? Yeah. You can't tell me. They weren't up there looking around. And they, they didn't know Dave was dating a retired judge's daughter. That the men on the other side of the duplex had a copy of my phone. And those idiots had my house bugged. And they were already framing me and drugging me up. And that idiot, and he was probably just a neighbor on the other side of the duplex or a drug dealer. Impersonating a federal officer for a cheap stunt. You can't tell me Will didn't know any of this. So when I went in that FBI building, do you realize how stupid that office looked? When I'm, now it's a sealed building, you had to get buzzed in, okay? People, people are talking about the case out in the hallway. Well, you called your sister, that's why nobody helped you. Well, yeah, I called Will, right? And my head spinning, the guy impersonated the federal officer before my head spinning again, told you that where I had took the card out for Sarah. The guy showed up at payment. Uh-huh. And I hadn't even called Will back. Next, and Dave's threatening my life in the truck. And the next day, my head's spinning again. And the only thing I can remember to tell Will is the, what a shame, I not the attempt to kidnap me, attempt to carjacking. Mm -mm. And I couldn't remember to tell him that guy went to pay more the night before. Mm-mm. Miss me inform him. Da 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 da. Next day I call Dixie. I get her to stay out of it. Somebody tries to break up. They break in my house. And I get off the phone with Dixie and they had broken my house. I call my sister Pam and she tries to get me called out behind. I'm like, Pam, these people are crazy. There, I got a copy of my phone. They're outside mocking me. I said, they, They've been mocking me for a copy of my phone. I'd have to get a prepaid phone and call you at work. It's that's crazy. And one's already told on me. She's like, what? And I said, never mind, stay out of this. I got it. Promise me I'll stay out of it. I got this. Okay. I told her in 2021 that I called the FBI. She's like, when did you do that? I said, 2018. She's like, I didn't realize that. No, she didn't. So where they're talking about the case outside that office, do you realize how stupid those agents looked inside? 
Now, you can't tell me where I didn't call Will back. Those agents weren't up there freaking out. She's got all these threats, and they're leaving it in the mall. That they weren't up there freaking out, driving around to find out what's going on. Hmm? They knew. 100% they knew. Michelle's mother said they explained well about Michelle. Brant Wilma, August 10th or 11th, 62. Mm -hmm. See, Sarah, when I mean, you told me you couldn't help me unless I had a witness, I said, I already talked to Sarah. She's ready to talk to you. Sarah told me she tried to call him several times. I didn't return her phone call. I want you to talk to her with this. Hmm? Exactly. This whole thing, like they said, was a setup. I called the hotline. I turned this into the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. See, we'll open a state case. A protected custody for an informant. He has a recorded statement asking for help, agreeing to protect me. A cop went to Dave. Has his recorded statement of knowing the threats of my life. It's the only time you can be in somebody's home. Otherwise, they have to arrest you. It's a one to four years. A legal search and seizure can be longer for stalking. Okay? And it's not admissible. Because then you don't have to worry about people photoshopping their shower scene. Drugging people up, erasing people out of the room. And changing everything and altering everything. To escape prosecution and think you're stupid enough you can get in trouble for it. Okay. He knew. He knew. Because you can't tell me in three days. They weren't up there looking around frantically and wanting to know why I didn't go back. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell me that he didn't know, like the security guard said they always knew. And he told the camp police and investigators about the shower scene in the other room and the drug mm -hmm. confession. I'm not going to 